KFC is known by the face of a white bearded man, and of course, by their renowned chicken. Do you know how smooth it is to just drive into any of the locations of KFC, order what suits you and you get on your way? Do you see how easy and stress-free that is? Well, it was not always that way. KFC did not start as a multi-location company. In fact, you would be shocked at the success roadmap the company had to walk through. In today's episode, we explore the origin of KFC and how the company grew to be what we know it has in 2022. After this video, you might not view the KFC franchise the same way. Right at the beginning. The beginning of this beautiful story starts way before 1930, as many people choose to begin the story. It starts from the birth of Harlan Sanders, who lost his father at the age of 5 and by the age of 13 left home because his stepfather was not a fan of having stepchildren. Sanders began his journey. He delved into different professions. Sanders worked as a streetcar conductor, an insurance seller, a railroad fireman, a steamboat operator, a tire seller, and a lawyer. It is obvious that before 1930, Sanders would never have thought the idea of dying as the owner of a multi-location eatery possible. Then came the year when he had to run a gas station in Corbin, Kentucky. While running the gas station, Sanders needed an extra source of income and chose to begin cooking and serving his gas customers fried chicken and an array of other dishes he had learned as a child. Soon enough, word spread like wildfire and people began to troop in from far just to have a taste of the famed chicken. The gas station was eventually scrapped and utilized fully as a restaurant. Would you have ever thought that the idea of the fried chicken outlet you so much enjoy stemmed from the search for extra income? Well, there you have it. More from that is the fact that the receipt of 11 herbs and spices guarded as trade secrets till this day came from Sanders' experiment in 1938. In his autobiography, he wrote, I threw two handfuls of it into the flour and stirred it up with the rest of my seasonings. When I fried it up, it was the best chicken I'd ever tasted in my life. And, I've never changed my ingredients from that time to this. The Rise and Fall of KFC Despite the experimental start, KFC had a great start. In 1936, six years after the start of his side business, Harlan Sanders was awarded the title of Kentucky Colonel by the then Governor of Kentucky. And by 1937, the expansion of the business began. The first business expansion was to incorporate into a motel and a cafe, the Sanders Courts and Cafe, that could seat about 120 people comfortably. But with this meant extra orders in a shorter period and the chicken order remained the customer favorite off the menu. In the same decade, the Sanders Courts and Cafe opened a second outlet in Asheville, North Carolina. However, the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise did not always have it good. In 1939, after the Asheville expansion, the Corbin Courts and Cafe was destroyed by a fire outbreak. This was the timing of the Second World War. By the end of the war, the customer base had been destroyed, and even though the Corbin restaurant was rebuilt, Sanders was forced to sell his Asheville restaurant. As the saying goes, bad things happen in pairs. For Sanders, this was one trying period for his growing company. This trying period can be in form of an interstate bypass built on the highway which ended up drastically reducing the number of persons that commuted through the highway and in turn, reduced the customers he got. In 1955, he was left with no choice but to sell his Corbin property and move on to what lay ahead, the sale of the franchise. Well, in retrospect, we can say the low sales in Corbin were exactly what Sanders needed to propel his business from a simple restaurant to a billion-dollar investment. In 1952, three years before he sold his Corbin property, Sanders hired a sign painter named Don Anderson. Don was the one to coin up the name as we have it today, the Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. Before this, in 1939, Sanders was increasingly unhappy with the time frame it took to prepare the fried chicken in a way that still retained its distinctive taste. Deep frying was not an option for him and preparing them before orders ended in wastage. In his process of experimenting, he purchased a pressure cooker. As of this time, the pressure cookers were used majorly to steam vegetables. However, Sanders redesigned one to never be a pressure fryer. This reduced the number of minutes of preparing his fried chicken from 35 minutes to 8 minutes. Recall that at the beginning of this video, we said Harlan Sanders was awarded the title of Kentucky Colonel. His branding emanated from the Colonel title he received. He began to dress the part. He grew out a goatee, wore a black frock coat which was later changed to white, and attached a string tie while he was called the Colonel as a joke. 
When he was to expand, the joke became the face of the brand. As he began his journey through the United States, his first accomplishment was at South Salt Lake, Utah, to his longtime friend Pete Harmon. Pete owned one of the largest restaurants in the city, and it was a breakthrough to incorporate the KFC chicken recipe into their menu. Harmon bought the idea off Sanders' lips, believing it to be a way to differentiate his brand from his competitors. Having a touch of Southern hospitality, the deal of trade was simple. Sanders received four cents on each piece of chicken that is sold on his account. While he teaches them his recipe and they get a go-ahead to feature his invention on their menus and make use of his name to promote the menu, one could say Sanders knew exactly how big this was going to get and sought to protect the integrity of his recipe. He was sure to remain the face of the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Pete introduced selling the fried chicken in a cardboard bucket with Sanders' image as the face of Kentucky Fried Chicken, and it was he who coined the famed slogans of KFC. It's finger lickin' good, nobody does chicken like KFC, and so good. By 1963, after his first agreement, there were 600 franchises in Utah where his recipe was just to make fried chicken making it the largest fast food operation in the United States. The franchise was doing great, but Sanders had aged with time. Running the business became too overwhelming for him. He had to sell. The first sale was in 1964 to a group of investors led by John Y. Brown Jr. and Jack C. Massey. The deal with Sanders received $2 million to own the franchise, was entitled to a lifetime salary, and remained the company's quality controller and trademark. Seven years after, in July 1971, Brown sold the company to Hubline, a food packaging and drinks company, for $285 million. At this time, the number of outlets had increased to 3,000 in 48 different countries. Sanders died in 1980 and two years after his death, Hubline was acquired by R. J. Reynolds. After so much acquisition and sales, one would expect this to be the end. However, Reynolds sold once again to PepsiCo for $850 in July 1986. KFC Today The name KFC was officially adopted in 1991, although it was KFC unofficially, in a bid to distance the brand from the tainted image of fried foods. By 1994 KFC had opened 5,149 outlets in the US and 9,407 throughout the countries in the world including China. PepsiCo acquired KFC, and it became a subsidiary of other divisions, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. Together, the three franchises grew into the Tricon Global Restaurant Incorporated. At this time, 30,000 outlets had been opened courtesy of the three divisions. Tricon was afterward renamed Yum! Brands by the start of the 21st century, in May 2002. Through each decade, KFC suffered one blowback or the other. From controversies on types of chicken used to activists claiming animal cruelty. Yet through it all, the franchise grew to be the second, with McDonald securing the first spot as the largest restaurant chain by sales. KFC today sells not only fried chicken, it has incorporated other chicken products like chicken fillet sandwiches and wraps, the sake of salads and side dishes such as french fries and coleslaw, and other desserts. This is where KFC stands today. Growing from a side hustle business of one man in a small town into a subsidiary division of Tricon with 22,621 locations in over 150 countries. Do you think Sanders should never have sold his franchise to begin with? Tell us in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video and share it.